Well, hi, everybody. It looks like I've gone live now. So uh, welcome to the show. This is a live coffee with Craig. And for those of you that haven't been here before, this is where I do two things now. I make predictions for world events and things that are going to happen, particularly as we look forward into 2024. And I'll also give some personal messages as well um, that are done in advance. But I'll, I'll tell you about that a little bit as we move on. So I just want to say, first of all, uh, welcome to Coffee with Craig. Where's my link? Uh, there we go. See you soon. <laughs> Hi again, welcome to the show. And um, for those of you that are kind of unfamiliar with this format, format, let me just explain what I'm going to do. Um, I do some world predictions, but they're based on your questions because we're doing this one live today. So have some questions ready that you want to ask me. Guys, I see you coming in now um, in the comments already. Um, so if I miss it first time, you can always put it in a second time. Don't put questions for personal messages in the comments at, while we're live, please, because it won't work like that. But I'm also going to mix this, as it were, with my connection with spirit. So I give a few personal predictions to people and connections from the spirit world. Um, these are what we call in advance. So basically, it's any somebody coming to this show later, probably not while we're live, but later, may get this message and spirit know that you're going to be watching this show and they put a message out for people. Now, last week, I did this the other day I did this before I've done it lots of times in the past and if you look in the comments you'll see that every single message was taken right down to the last little detail so that's the important thing you know it's not all it could fit it's will this fit completely for you so there's going to be a mixture today of personal messages and some of my messages as I tune into spirit to see what they how they are help me answer questions <coughs> that you you may ask at, um, in the comments so first going to give you one of my in advance quick things first of all so this is for somebody is watching this and i was picking this up as i was just about to go live and i heard the name walter somebody called walter and there's a motorcycle accident there was a motorcycle accident i stress was so he, he there was a motorcycle associated with this person and he was he is talking to me now because he's with me again now. And he's saying that um, this happened on a, a long stretch of road. It was like a big, long highway of some sort, not not in a normal town or street like you would know. It's a long highway. It gives me a feeling of somewhere like could be in California. It could be in um Australia or even Africa, because it has a long, long road with quite barren landscape around it. And he it, there was an accident of some sort. He hit something, came off his bike and was unconscious. So there wasn't another vehicle involved with this. Um, and he died of exposure on this 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 road where he'd fallen over the side. So it's a strange description I'm given here. But Walter says that there's or he, Walter is the name associated around it. And he's talking about that his friends would know about this. Right. Because it was also in the newspaper, he says to me. OK, so um, that would be a connection for somebody here. Um, and he wants you to know he's he's he survived death, that he's in the spirit world um, and he's very happy. Um, with something that's happening with a large group of people at the moment, they'll come back together again. There's a group that were separated that have now come back together um, and they've got uh, a lot of common goals that they're working for at the moment. So that's Walter talking about that. He also talks about somebody called um, Mary, which I think was something in his family. 
It might have been his mother or grandmother or something. There's a Mary in his family. And there is also something he's saying here about um, there was a fire, a fire at something like a, a, a petrol station or something like that, that that people would remember that he was associated with. I don't know if he had some association somewhere along the line, possibly with firefighting. OK, so that's the first one I'm getting. So that's a, that's a kind of a message that maybe for somebody who's already in. But if it is, please, please put the comment. Don't just email. Don't come emailing me because I can't respond to these. Please put it in the actual comments to this video if this is for you. So we're going to do a few predictions now. So I'm coming over to the comments and see what you guys are asking. And um, we'll have a look and see what um, we have here. OK, let's do that one first. That's quite an interesting one. OK, I'll give you my personal view first. Um, then I'll tune in and see what I feel with it. Um, I, I think the danger with it, I've expressed this before to people, is that it's not so much about him and about what he does, morally, right or wrong, whatever you might, however you might consider it. The thing that worries me about him is how quickly he can be switched off um, as a channel. They've switched off his advertising today haven't they? Um, and it means that a TV programme with a number of um, initially un, um, anonymous, four anonymous people uh, brought him down, really. So that that worries me, that, that he could be brought down by four people who, you know, were not prepared to give their names. And it wasn't the police case at the time. Should this sort of justice be done in the public domain or wouldn't it have been better for them to go to the police with this rather than make a lot of money out of a program destroying somebody else albeit you know a good cause or not you know it really needs to be done on evidence not upon he said she said which it has the quality to this so my gut feeling is he's being set up but let me just see if i can get uh, any thoughts about where this might go in the future i'm just going to try to just connect with the spirit world a little bit see if i can get something It's going to take some time, but I think he's going to get let off in the end because the evidence I feel is hard to prove. Right. Um, I think he'll get let off in the end, but his career will be very badly damaged by this. Um, it, it's a question of consent. So. Um, And, and I get a sense that there might even he might even have some health issues, whether it's going back to addictions again or something. I feel there's some health issues that will be um, involved in this. I'm, he I'm hearing something about mental health issues. So I don't know if one of his accusers may have mental health issues. Now, I'm not saying that that's what I'm getting sense intuitively from the spirit side. Um, that's my feeling about this. OK, let's have another look at something else. OK, I saw Thomas Markle uh, being interviewed, begging Meghan and Harry to let him meet his grandchildren. Will this wish come true? Um, I briefly saw some of that. It did seem ever so heart wrenching uh, to see, you know, it's his grandchildren. Um, and, the, you know, whether the guy's done right or wrong, he's got a right to see his grandchildren, hasn't he? I think in law, in British law, you would have a right to see his grandchildren. Let me just see what I can pick up from this, see if there's anything else I can sense with it. I feel he will get his wish, but it will be fought in the court of law. So I, my sense is that um, he'll have to fight it. Um, and I feel he will get his wish. And um, in the coming year, a lot's going to be happening, particularly to Meghan Markle. Um, I'm seeing her... I'm seeing her getting exposed for something. 
something that she said that's untrue, that's not in the press at the moment, nothing in the press or anything about it at the moment, that there's something that she's going to be accused of a major lie that has political and um, legal implications. So I'm being told that she there's something new coming. Um, whether this comes out uh, with a potential court case, because I've asked about Thomas Markle, but I think it's not strictly associated with that. It's something new coming with that as well. Will China's economy be worse next year than it is now? When will I be able to when will I be able to recover? The stock loss is huge right now. Now, those that follow the channel will know that last year I predicted a number of things, one of which was the huge downturn in the Chinese economy through 2023. That's happened. I also said, you notice, I when I see things on um, Lampedusa, um, the island, if I pronounce it right, but a second wave of huge immigration into Europe. That's also come true if you look back at my 2023 predictions. So I've already said there would be a major crash this year. Let me see what I, I have some thoughts about this already, but I'm just going to, you know, if you send me your energy, guys, too, it helps because strangely enough, I, I, I sent you when you're talking, when I'm doing this. So, um, OK, thanks. Um The crash continues. It gets worse. It gets a lot worse. In fact, I feel Chinese economy is really on the slide. And the Chinese economy during 2024 is going to affect all the world economies, too. Um, it's going to cr create. It's going to create problems in Europe, particularly more so Europe than America. But it's going to I feel it's going to really affect America, uh, Europe. And I'm seeing. Um, quite a lot of political upheaval through Europe, partly because of the um, uh, stuff coming to light about corruption from people that have taken backhanders, particularly in Europe. And also Trudeau, I feel, and I've said this before, I felt he'd had, he's had some big Chinese backhanders and Biden as well. So I'm sensing um, once the money's dried up, um, the, the starts of the search. I feel there's a search for the guilty here in the West. So um, mainly in China, I'm seeing property crash. It's had been happening. There is that already. But um, and I said it would happen last year. But I'm seeing the major property crash this time. Infrastructure projects going wrong. I'm not sure it's going to happen in 2024 but I'm, i do know that ahead there will be a second sort of revolution in china um against the communist party and this comes when the economy hits rock bottom but next year 2024 i'm seeing a slide a slide in the economy i don't know if it's hit rock bottom next year but it's going to be very difficult i feel for china Uh, so we're not talking here about the Australian uh, vote. This is for the indigenous vote to amend the constitution. So this is that indigenous people will have a right to um, have a say in the uh, politics and what it, what what goes through parliament. I believe in the Australian constitution. So it was almost I described it a little bit like a House of Lords sort of thing. You know, sort of a second chamber type of feel. Let me see what I feel with this. I feel on so many levels, I mean, for me, it feels such, it feels on so many levels a just cause, but my sense is it's going to be very impractical and the consequences of a such that it would make running the parliament almost impossible because it depends on its reach. So I'm sensing there would be I think there's going to be a postponement to it 
I know we've got a yes, no vote, but it feels as if whatever is voted for is changed radically. I feel it won't stand as it stands as it is. So my thoughts are that it's going to be a limited uh, application of this, um, more of a symbolic thing than an actual ability to um, to change constitution. So I suppose I'm saying it's a no, but it's also a, my, a small yes, as it were, but it's mainly a no. It, I, I feel it's going to be radically changed uh, and it will be changed and be a I think will be seen as quite a good thing. Trudeau, obviously the time of day I'm coming on, we've got Canadians and Australians on, on board. Um, I've spoken about Trudeau before because I feel his career is coming to its end soon. Um, and I feel there's corruption scandals. Now he's already, he, he's kind of, got himself in hot water at the moment with um, uh, the Indian uh, meeting where he's said about um, uh, a possible assassination that went on in in, in Canada. Um, and so there's, there's troublesome things around him. But often these things are sometimes used as distraction from other things. Um, and my feeling is that there's a lot more afoot with Trudeau than the press tell us. I, I sense that he is, um, uh, there's all sorts of negative things. This is another Biden, um, Hunter Biden laptop sort of affair. There's, there's, there's information out there that could prosecute him, particularly I feel for corruptions, corruption. And again, this is where I feel before with China and things like that. Um, you know, there's lots of questions about people who are politicians, are they gay or not? You know, is uh, Obama, was he gay? People say, or was it just, a, uh, you know, there's been things about that. I, get, I, I'm, I can't answer that one. I don't think it's going to be answered. I, I don't think we're going to get anything that's going to say one way or the other with it. You know, I know this, there's rumours about that. Um, whether real or isn't, is it wrong? You know, I mean, I mean, that's not wrong, is it? But it's just, it, it, it's the deception would be questionable. Um, but I think more of the question is, is, is there something coming to light with him, I feel, about a uh, China scandal? I've said it before, really. Let's just see if I can sense any more, see if I can be given anything. Let's see anything in the spirit. Mm. OK. All right. And I also want to say I feel as if there's something going to happen around Trudeau, not necessarily directly with him, but something close to him where I've seen a car crash. OK, so I'm seeing something, an accident of some sort that may be associated around him. I don't think he's in the car, but there's something like there's crashed cars or something just crashed cars near him. All right. So let's keep an eye on the press in 2024. See if that comes up, because I know you guys follow this channel and watch these things. But I saw something with a car crash with Trudeau. These are interesting ones I've not even considered, actually. The, hello, Craig. Do you have any predictions of the Pope? As I think there will be a new Pope fairly soon. You know, I think you're right. As I'm tuning in, I see the white smoke from the Vatican chimney. And that's a symbol of a pope, isn't it? Of the election of a pope. So my thoughts is there will be a new pope. And I want to say November next year, I feel whether they've retired him or he's died, I don't know. I don't want to predict people's deaths, really, do you? But I, I get the feeling he might either be retired or there may be a new pope. But I think we've got a new pope in the um, in the line. And you know what? I'm just being shown swans for some reason. I don't know what that means, but I don't know if the next pope to follow this one has a symbol of a swan 
or the some swan like symbol the pope's symbol is usually a bee but i'm i'm seeing a swan so there's something that connected with swans that would identify the future pope okay that's a weird one but i'm just giving you what comes from my unconscious what comes through clairvoyance because i'm sensing the spirit around me and they're doing it to me by trying to pop pictures in my head to give me some um uh things here let me just see if i can just get another little personal message for people coming in because um again these are what we call advanced clairvoyance which means they're done in advance so the spirit world's given it to me in advance and somebody will see this and if you see it don't forget please please put the message in the comments and show how it fits in every single aspect of it not just it could fit what fits let's just see if we can get another one here i've got a lady wanting to connect and she's talking she wants to connect to two grandchildren that are out there that are watching this and the two grandchildren are watching this at the same time okay they're not kid kids they elder people that are the grandchildren and she's saying to me here to her grandchildren and she was a bit deaf this lady she gives me <coughs> she gives me a name like marguerite so i don't know if i've got french connection because it's like margaret in the french form margarita or marguerite i'm hearing here and there's definitely french connections with this and this lady had a very strong strong interest in music and classical music because i'm seeing things like violins and things like this and she she was very interested in the theater and tells me that there were people in her family that had played in the opera not her i feel but there have been people in the family that played in the opera and she's something here about music and she's trying to pass on to the grandchildren that watch to both of you who've been thinking about going back into music properly and i feel i want to say to do that she died of quite a difficult cancer condition that went through her whole body she said it was a long held out illness for her and there was a big break in the family when um she died um it was like it, i feel like two male people were against each other there was a battle between two male people which actually became a physical fisticuffs sort of battle and she's asking if the family can be healed but also when we heal we also need to look again to our music a strange message but if all of that fits with you please put it in the comments below and she's saying that music heals heal the family okay okay let's have a look and see what some of the more questions if i'm i'm looking as or if you put them in early you might want to put them in again guys because i keep i'm only seeing the ones at the bottom of the screen at the moment because scrolling's a bit difficult i'm missing them now <laughs> um now, we don't have individual messages for people like that. Uh, so I, I need to catch. That's an interesting one. <clears throat> uh, do you see a um, revolution coming to Iran? Will monarchy return to Iran? So let's see what we can pick up generally about Iran, actually see what I can feel. Some of the things I have said already is that I feel um, there's going to be a, um, uh, a push forward in Iran on their nuclear power. Uh, and their nuclear weapons program. Uh, money's been given to them recently for those hijackers. Uh, well, well, not hijackers, that, um, in the people they um, put in prison. The I oh, can't get my words out because I'm, when I do this, my brain goes a bit mulchy, actually, when I'm trying to tune into spirit at the same time. But the people that were kidnapped, kidnapped, okay, um, and returned. And that money, I feel, is going, it should go to humanitarian things. But then money that they're already putting to, into humanitarian things themselves can be pushed into other things. So I see america puts money into it it goes to say that's for medicine that's for food and they say okay the money we've already got for medicine and already got for food we're going to put that into weapons because i feel there's going to be a big push forward for nuclear armament of um iran and i feel russian scientists going in there to help them with the program to kind of destabilize the west so we're going to have a really serious problem with suddenly iran not just with nuclear capability but with the capability to deliver nuclear weapons. And I feel they're going to get hit. They're going to get hit. And I feel they're going to get hit by Israel. 
Okay, because I see Mossad going in there. They might do it under cover. They might do a James Bond and blow it up, you know. Um, but there's something going to happen uh, with that. And that's going to be a big crisis point, I feel, next year and in 2024. But um, the, the but meanwhile, on a very positive note, I do feel that the kind of the movement in Iran to become modern people, um, particularly the women's movement in Iran, um, is not going to be put down. Um, it's it, well, it will be tried to put down, but it's not going to be stopped. Put it that way. And I feel that Iran will eventually um, have a new government that the Ayatollahs and the rest of it will be pushed from power. Um, but it's going to be a very they're not they're going to hold on hard for this. And that's why I feel often when a country gets in trouble internally, it often creates problems abroad so we can distract from the problems abroad, just like China may invade or attack Taiwan in order to distract from the destruction that's happening at home. So my sense is that um, Iran will have its new revolution, too. I think 2024 is not going to see the complete overturning of it, but I see much, much more um, a vigorous protesting and uh, more people getting involved and um, great difficulties with uh, political um, problems that have been caused by suddenly Iran becoming a armed nuclear power. Um, and they say they're not going to do it, but they, it's happening and it will happen. Will the monarchy return? No, they won't. The monarchy will not return to Iran. They say never say never, but I, I feel I don't feel the monarchy will return to Iran, not in any power form. I mean, if the revolution happened, obviously the monarchy could visit. But, um, you know, what remains of the um, Shah's families, I don't know what there is left. But um, but no, I don't see them having a, a, a kingship again. OK, hi, Craig. Um, will there be a change in the EU presidency and its structures or collapse? <coughs> well, let, <coughs> let me just say a few things about um, about Europe, first of all. Um, I sense in 2024 that there's going to be um, a big swing towards right wing policies because this is going to be caused not just because of the migration we've got now. I mean, We've had, what, 200 boats came across to Lampedusa, 7,000 migrants, and that's just one crossing. Now we've got also all the troubles that are happening in the whole north of Africa. Um, we've seen terrible floods and the dam breaking there, but this could extend, I feel, right across that whole southern uh, Mediterranean area. We'll see more things like this. More. This, this is one of the first places getting hit by extreme weather. And I think we're going to see more of it. I think it's going to be hit, hit, hit there and all down the Nile as well, I see in the future. So massively flooded Nile in the future too. So we're going to see these, these things happening again. And of course, we're going to get huge migration and the um, <clears throat> EU presidency and the EU policies have been, well, you know, we let people in um, even if they've got, even if they're trying to escape poverty, which very, frankly the whole of Africa wants to escape poverty. So what I'm seeing is a complete breakdown eventually of all the EU structures, as it were. The European is Europe is going to be f finding itself with some very very difficult political parties arising. We've already seen a kind of mildly right wing policy. Um, politics happening in places like Italy. But I see these things becoming more and more right wing with the same thing happening in places like France. I see much more right. You know, Le Pen, for example, I think is going to be in power eventually. We're going to see similar things happening in unexpected places like Sweden and Norway, where I see extreme right wing thoughts coming in and much more extreme politics, which they've never had in the past. Even Denmark and Germany, that it, it's, there's going to be right wing swings, which is going to create a great deal of unrest. It's going to say, right, my, we're not going to have migrants in our country, says Hungary. Yes, you are, says Germany, and so on. And it's going to be this conflict of who's going to take everybody. So I think multiculturalism will be seen to fail in Europe 
in 2024. And I do unfortunately see major um, conflicts and major swings to very right wing politics emerging in 2024. I think we're going to need to see a bit further forward to see these things come to light. But I, I fear for that, frankly, um, although I think some of the policies are very wrong there um, of, of migrants, because I don't think um, I don't think any country can take or, or continent can take huge in swathes of other cultures however good they may be, you know, we're not co condemning the people here, but this is, it cannot absorb. It means its own culture has to be compromised. And um, I feel this means um, much more troubles. It's already happening in America, of course, too, um, until that border is closed. So it's only right that a nation should be a nation, I feel. This is my thoughts now, but um, my feeling is the EU presidency will definitely be shaky during that time. And we probably see a ch many multiple changes in the presidency. See if there's any more for that. No, I think that's enough for now. Um, where's that one? That's a good, that's an interesting one, I find. Okay, can I ask about the Dalai Lama and will he go on for the next generation? So, first, my personal thoughts about that. Um, I, I think the whole Dalai Lama thing was an absolute um, stitch up, really, taken out of context. You know, when he had all this business with kissing the boy, I think we were seeing something that was more sort of acceptable in Tibet as a sort of a greeting time. That's all, this has been all debated on the web and things. Um, but I think it was a stitch up from China. And China, again, has the Pancha Lama in the background, which was who was kidnapped from Tibet when he was a boy. So they been bringing up an alternative Dalai Lama and Pancha Lama in the background. So when the time comes for the Dalai Lama to die, um, they're going to come with alternative um, candidates who they're going to say is the true person. And uh, we'll try to push out the um, in next incarnation of the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama has suggested that he may not incarnate again, which could be an interesting issue. But um, my feeling is there will be a Dalai Lama to follow him. I think we will be given a new Dalai Lama. So he will go on for another generation. And um, I, I, as I said with Tibet, I do feel ultimately Tibet will be free from China. With the coming problems in China, Tibet will be able to become free of China. I thought, like I say, I see Tibet ultimately, um, I see China ultimately in the future breaking back into its into its earlier cantons, as I think that's what you call them, um, the other uh, multiple countries. Um, and it will work better. It will become like a European Union, an economic union of different areas with, with China being multiple autonomous regions. Did they replace Biden with a clone? Obviously. <laughs> And, uh, well, he looks like he's been replaced by a clone. I mean, if they were to put a clone in for Biden, they might have got a healthy one, I think, not one that was falling to bits. So, no, I, I don't think those, Deborah, I don't think those are even, to be honest, I know people ask those things, but these body doubles that they say are out there and things like that, I think this is um, this is where people get a bit too carried away with um, with fantasies with that, right? Um, I have said I think there will be multiple um, pandemics. This is not the first pandemic we're going to see in the world. We saw a viral pandemic, but I'm seeing more like a um, bacterial type of pandemic next time, and which is more dangerous, apparently. And um, I'm being shown that it doesn't arise this time from... Um, it, I'm just being shown it doesn't arise this time from China, although China is obviously a place where these things could arise. But I get something like uh, something arises from Australia. You would think it'd be from somewhere like Africa and something. But I'm feeling as if the, it's either identified or spotted or first seen in, 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 in people in Australia. But that's not next year. I think that's a, a little bit way ahead. And I'm also being told when it happens, we will beat it. It won't be the, quite the same level because we'd be better prepared next time round. I, 
Um, I think he'll be removed because I think Trudeau is going to be under such pressure. It might appear he's quit, but he would be removed. OK, let's just do another little um, one for people watching again, see if we can get another little personal one, because I think some people find these very interesting. And those that get the messages, um, uh, it blows your mind <laughs> because I've seen the, I've seen your comment when it happens. Let's see if we can get another little personal one. OK, this is I'm getting a message for someone. This is connected with Hong Kong, a spirit message for someone who was it, this is a person who died on a bike. But this is a push bike. Right. And he's an older man. And I feel that he died during the period when the British um, were controlling Hong Kong, a very humorous man. And he's telling me something that the person watching this would understand him because this man had something to do with puppets or puppeteers. Oh God, this sounds weird. But the more obscure, the more important it is that to show that this is not just it couldn't just fit anybody because he's talking about there was a puppet company or something. I think they used to make puppets. I get the feeling we made puppets. We had a factory that made and exported puppets. And this is the man that would have set that company up a long time ago. And somebody watching this now understands this very strange man. We also made buttons. We also went, we diversified into making buttons and button company as well. But this particularly the puppets, because we started off by making the eyes of the puppets and we put button eyes and we also diversified into buttons. Oh, this sounds straight. I sound, I sound mad now, but uh, I, I've got to give what I get. And he's just saying that there's the people that are watching this have been also talking about setting up a new business of some sort. And often it's the it's the niche businesses, the small, the strange businesses like I've described here that make the real money. So you're doing it again. It's being done in the fact it's a family business. You've tried to raise the money. And I feel that two banks will support you. OK. Right. So let's see. But put your message. Every message has been taken so far um, to the to the complete detail. But please put the details in if that message is for you. Okay. I'll do one more now. How long is it going to take the world populations to say no to exploration, exploitations, I presume, of people, natural resources and go back to normal normality and respect? OK, I okay, this would probably be more my opinion than from the spirit, because it's not such a predict so much a prediction, but we'll see what we can get. Um, I think the normality is being completely twisted around because we have not perhaps caught up with the speed of technology. And um, it means that people are spending sort of, for example, their childhoods on games, uh, which the human condition has never encountered that before. We've had a degree of communication between people that is in many ways unnatural. We might have 5000 friends on Facebook, but not a single friend in the real world, as it were. These are very unusual um, conditions for people to grow up in and to communicate in. And it's created a great deal of loneliness. I mean, we might have, like I say, 5,000 friends on, on Facebook, but no real friends ourselves. So that's a lonely situation. It's created, um, it's, it's brought together odd groups of people so we can have our own sadomasochist group on Facebook or whatever they do, you know. And that means oddities can come together and become um, exaggerated and seem like the norm. And it's become very selfish because of this too, because everything is... And when you're on the computer, there's nobody to report to. It's me, me, me. And all the all the trolls and things that go on and things like that. You can you can speak with impunity without um, any um, body telling you what's right and wrong. So the whole concept of right and wrong, the whole concept of morality, again, because of the Internet's reach with sexual things and all the rest of it is is all twisted and distorted and i think it means that people's heads are messed up basically <laughs> you know, they don't know how to work in the real world and out of this has come all sorts of odd ideas you know uh, only i matter is what it's really about and it's um also uh, and i think 
woke has become a political type of movement, really. It's the new the new Marxism, I would say, you know, and I think that's a very dangerous political force that has warped out of all these sort of, frankly, what I think are mixed up views that have been uh, with, with overexposure for everybody to, to this new way of the internet. We have not caught up um, sp uh, as, a, as a humanity with this, you know, and, and also the control power that big companies have over the world to exploit resources for their own interest and no interest whatsoever about people. You know, I, you hear me moan sometimes about when we go shopping, it's all just numbers now. It's all just automatic. It's just we're going to sell you the stuff. There's not even someone, there's no smiling man on the corner shop anymore. Everything is all online. And this is also destructive. And, and I think makes many lonely people again as well, particularly older people that would um, want to go to the shops and things like that. And there's nobody for them to speak to. And they sit at home all day long and no reason to go out and only um, an Internet that they don't understand to keep them company. You know, so I think there's a social breakdown, really. There's a social breakdown and it's a, and it's a moral breakdown. But more importantly, it's a spiritual breakdown, isn't it? Isn't it a spiritual breakdown? And meanwhile, the forces of greed just plunder on in the background, destroying, like you say, our natural resource, resources and so forth. So we're not going to get much normality back again until people start living in ways that we've, we've been more used to over the many, many millions of years we've been on this planet where people actually meet each other where people actually if they're going to have an argument they do it face to face and take the consequences if they're going to um have friends they're going to be real friends you might only have five friends in life but that's enough not these huge great quantities and wanting lots of likes or oh, by the way give a like to this by the way uh, and so on you know uh it, it i think that's where the breakdown has has come personally will it change will it go back to a normality I think people are going to want to move away a bit more from the Internet. I think it will happen. You know, it, it'll go more into the background when it's less screens and more automatically done for us. You know, because we're all lazy. You know, we'll let artificial intelligence do all the work for us. But we do. I, I see in the future, actually, and I've seen this many times, that what's going to develop is going to be more spiritual communities, because the only way out of this, I think, is spiritually. And I'm seeing people coming together in groups and they're like, it's a bit like Jane and I are trying to do where we're trying to set up our spiritual center. We see it, we've got a place in Italy. We're trying to turn it into a spiritual center. And I see they're gathering together people of same spiritual mindset, working together spiritually to help develop themselves and be, and for the betterment of the world. And that and in our case would also be streamed live so that the world can see it too. But it's about people coming together. And I think there's going to be a lot more things like that, a awful lot more things like that. And those type of small communities, and I think there will also be small communities that will cut off from all this technology, like the hippies tried to do with turn on, tune in, drop out and form farming communities. I think there's going to be a lot more of that in the future where people go offline. Um, for spiritual with a spiritual drive behind it you know not with a few people being lazy putting their feet up and everyone else doing the work but a proper place where you work hard and you you you, you develop spiritually those things are going to develop and much much further in the future they're going to go or take it up into a grand scale i feel you know places like tibet i said will eventually become free areas and become huge parks with no technology in them where people can retreat and follow the spiritual life and where the Himalayan yogis and the and the um, uh, Tibetan yogis and the, the great white brotherhood even of Blavatsky, where all of that can be connected to again. That will happen without technology, right? Um, people will turn against technology. Technology will still be there. It'll still be doing its stuff. It'll still be taking us to Mars and the rest of it. But there'll be areas where people will say, you know, I'm giving us up for a while. I'm going to take five years off. And my, me and my family are going to go and just <laughs> live in the wilderness. You know, those type of things will happen. Um, and I feel the will, world will support that. That's a long, long way ahead. It's a long way ahead. And meanwhile, we've all got to work together, I think, and, and try to do something in a small way. 
And I think the small communities, and there's many of them out there already, but I think they, they're, they're, they're the answer uh, uh, and where people can connect one with another, you know. And actually, if you're interested in all this, you know, again, uh, Jane and I are trying to set up a centre, as you know. We're looking for help, people to help us, to sponsor, to develop it. There's a lot of information now. I've put some videos about it on my um, on the patron pages. So if you become a patron of this site, you can go and see some of those videos. And you, can, by becoming a patron, you can also help support our grand dream to do something wonderful in the world, you know, and to make this possible. So go and have a look at that. OK, I'm kind of there, I think, now. So, yeah, so here we go again. This is another um, Coffee with Craig. Um, and I'll do a few more of these live ones like this because I enjoy doing these too. Don't forget, if you've had a message, put it in the message below. And I'll see you again soon, guys. All right. And I'm going to have a look at the website oh, over there. Uh, where? There. Go and have a look at the website if you're interested in any of the other services I go to. Support me. <laughs> books and things, for example. Go read my books and you can book readings and the rest there. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can uh, say goodbye to you now. OK. See you soon. Bye for now. So would you like to know more? Come and see my website at psychics.co.uk where you can buy my books. You can also read lots of free articles and you can join our patron community if you like there. You can also book readings with myself and Jane. I do readings by Zoom and by email. Jane does them one to one at home. So have a look on the website. You'll find all that. And you'll also find our team of readers who have a, do international work. So you can book a psychic, a medium, an astrologer there. Um, and they're available now for phone readings 24-7. So visit our website, psychics.co.uk. You'll find a link in the description below.